Okay, so if I go back through my process, all five of those states, going from a compressed liquid or a subcooled liquid all the way to a superheated vapor, and I just maintain the pressure at the same value. What I'm going to see is something like this, and it will always follow this line. So I have this section right here from one to two, where energy is increasing before it becomes a saturated vapor, or sorry, saturated liquid. Right there is a saturated liquid. Then I increase it until it's a mixture. That's a mixture now. I increase it some more. It's now a saturated vapor. I increase it for more, and now it's a superheated vapor. Now this is a TV diagram for this. You're like, wait a minute, what, a TV diagram? We don't really use TV diagrams. Typically, as we go further on, we use TS diagrams. We use PV diagrams a lot, but these will exist for a little while until we learn about entropy. In real life, though, nothing is perfectly efficient. They're not going to be following these perfect lines if I try to heat it up and cool it down. So in real life, if you were to cool it down slowly, you would still not have it follow this exact same line. It would probably change a little bit. It might go down like this as you continue to remove energy. So you can't follow the path perfectly. But if we could, this is the path that would go each time so long as my pressure was constant. Okay. So saturation temperature and saturation pressure. These are two details which are vital to everything we're going to do so far. And you can see right here how they change. You don't have to worry about that diagram, it's just one that shows you that as my saturation pressure increases, so does my saturation temperature. And what the heck do I mean? So a saturation temperature is the temperature at which a pure substance changes phase at a particular pressure. And the saturation pressure is the pressure at which a pure substance changes phase at a given temperature. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, wait a second, I thought we were just adding heat to make it change phase. And that's completely true. We were talking about last time we had a little Bunsen burner. You know, it was, we had our piston right here. We had a Bunsen burner heating it up. And that works. I mean, that is one way I can cause it to change phase. However, I can also make it change phase by simply not adding heat and moving this up or down to change the pressure. If I change the pressure, it will also change phase. If I have a liquid and I decrease the pressure, so I lift it upward so that specific volume has to increase and its pressure decreases, what I will then get that happens is it will begin to turn into a gas. So it looks something like this. Now it's moved up and now I'm going to have some probably mixture of water and vapor. So that can happen. Okay, so we're going to stop here for this one because in the next video I want to go ahead and show you where we find saturation temperature and where we find saturation pressure inside of your tables because you need to know how to use your tables for this and it's vitally important that I go ahead and show that to you. But remember, this is simply where it begins to change phase. So if I have a co constant pressure and I change my temperature, it will begin to change phase at the saturation temperature. If I have a constant temperature and I change my pressure, it will begin to change phase at the saturation pressure. Thank you all for listening and next time we're going to jump into the tables. Woo! Okay, maybe that's not fun for you, but we need to do it, okay? It's important. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.